Okay, so I think we're ready to flip this thing around, but I don't want the three jaw chuck in here. I definitely want the four jaw in the in the lathe for that because you know I could I could flip the part around and try to chuck it back up, but it's or I can flip it around this way and put it in here, and it's going to run sort of true, but not completely true. And I'd like the thing to run completely true, so I'm going to use the four jaw. So let me. Okay. Swap the keys. This, this one uses a different key. Okay, let me get a dial indicator and let's uh, dial in the part. Well, doesn't look too bad for starters. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Okay. That's the highest jaw, so we'll loosen that slightly. Tighten that one. There we go, within a thou easily there. And back here, almost no movement at all. That's gonna be good enough. Could I get it closer? Probably. Okay, let's start out the same way we did on the other end. Let's uh, lightly face this and uh, get a center in it. Close enough to zero. And now let's go back one inch. 100, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1 inch. And put a mark. Okay, now the final step here is gonna to be to clean the hole up to size. And I'm gonna grab a half inch drill for that. A reamer would be nice. I don't have a half inch reamer, so we're gonna try this. And hopefully, if we get a little chatter right on the front, it won't matter, because remember that material is gonna be removed. But let's see. I'm going to slow this down a lot. Okay, I got this all the way down at 100 or 150 RPM now. Let's see if we can just run this through.
that's all the way through. See how we did. Ultimately, this is the guide rod that needs to fit in there. Oh, interesting. We're a little bit undersized. Okay. Well, we can bore. Not with any of these tools. Just looking to make sure there's not something in there. Let me think a little bit about what I want to do about that and uh, go ahead and get set up to do the, do the recess. Okay, I'll grab the boring bar and let's make the pocket for the die. Okay, we're within a thou or two. Let's see if the die fits. Yeah, nice. Quarter 20 die. Now I need a quarter 20 screw to take it out, but. There we go. Well, the only thing left to do with this, uh, besides figuring out what we're gonna do about that inside hole, is just take it over to the mill and put some holes in it for set screws and a cross hole for the handle. Of course, we're gonna have the same problem with the cross hole in this thing. So I'm thinking pretty much no matter what I do, I need to come up, I need to get a half inch reamer. and. Uh, so let's take this over to the mill and put some holes in it. Okay, so I had to think about the inside of this and I've measured it and it's very close. It's just roughness that's actually the issue because technically it's like 501 to 502, which is exactly what I expected from a drill to be slightly oversized. But the rods are exactly five inch, maybe a 10th over, maybe two tenths over. So I think I'm just gonna try polishing it up. And what I've got here is just a piece of emery on a uh, piece of stainless steel rod with a, a slit cut in it. And I'm just gonna run this in there and see if we can polish this out. And if this doesn't work, I'll put it on a drill, cordless drill motor and run it in there. It's gonna be fairly tight here. There we go. So 
we took a little bit of material. Let's see how that did. Getting part way in, about here's where the issue is, and I'm wondering if that's just where it was, uh, where the holes didn't line up from the two sides. We do a little bit more polishing right in the middle. the abrasive is going to work. I think I'm going to have to get a reamer and run it through there. I did manage to get abrasive all over my lathe. Well, I don't have a reamer, so I'm going to have to get one ordered. And uh, I guess we'll keep working on this next time. Okay, I spent some time thinking about this. Um, so the hole in there, I tried, you know, a little bit of abrasive paper on a rod to try to, to bring this out. And I've looked at the bore under light and it looks really good. It looks really clean. It's just not quite, this just won't quite go in. It fits really well up to right about there and then it doesn't quite go through but the same thing is true from the other side so i don't know that it's misalignment necessarily i was kind of counting on the drill to drill this oversize but it, it really didn't it's really not much oversize and so i think i'm going to come back through i was going to get a reamer but um then i got to figure out what size reamer is one thou oversize going to be enough for the slip fit i want so i decided to just come back with a boring bar so this is a very small boring bar, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set up and just take the very lightest of skim cuts. Now, I have this bar set slightly above center, and I did that on purpose so that as it's dragging, scraping the inside of the bore, if anything happens, it won't dig in and push below center. It, since it's slightly above center, it'll just push down, it'll back off the cut. So this should be enough. I should be able to take a thou or so off of the inside pretty easily, and we'll see how that works out. Or we'll find out why this was a bad idea. But either way, we'll find out. Yeah, I can hear it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and set a zero. And just to be safe, I'm gonna push it through a thousandth shy of that and just see what happens. Now what's happening is we're not taking anything. So I'm gonna take it right at my zero. I see just the tiniest little bit of dust on the end there. Let's see how we are for fit. Nope. Okay, so let me take one more thousandth. See where that gets us. Now 
now it's touching for sure. Okay, let's take one more. Okay, there we go. That's exactly what I needed. Okay. We flip it around, dial it in again, and we'll repeat. Okay, let's see where we are. And there it is. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now let's take it over to the mill and put some holes in it. Okay, I've got this set up here in the vise and I did a couple of things that are a little bit unusual. Um, one is, okay, I got one thing that's a little bit unusual. I've got it set up in here with uh, an extra aluminum jaw on this side. And the reason why I did that is because I need to drill completely through this in the center and the nut for my vise actually extends and is not very far away underneath the part about this far in front of the jaw. So by putting this extra vise jaw in here, I was able to space the nut back and give me room to run the tip of the half inch drill all the way through the part without running into any of the structure underneath. And I'll still need to be careful, but I think I should be fine with that. So first thing I need to do is I've got the edge finder and I want to locate the very center of the part. And I'll do that with the insides of the jaws and on the ends. just about right to me. Okay, now to figure out exactly where the holes need to go, we need to know exactly how long the piece is. Drawing called for four inches, but we didn't really pay any attention. So it's 4.078. Divide that by two, that means that the outer edges are, and I'll just write this right here, 2.039. Okay, so on the left hand end here, the width of this is 369.369, and the width of the re recess that we need to hit the middle of on this end is 0.25. So half of that's 0 0.125, half of 369, is 0.185. So we take this 2.039 minus 0.125 on this end and we get 1.914 and on this end 2.039 minus 0.185 that means we're at 1.854. So should be able to put in a spotting drill, just move to those X coordinates and spot our holes. 
And we'll go ahead and spot the one in the middle too. G0X minus 1.854. That looks about right there. And the other way is going to be G0X. 1.914. Okay, now we just need to put in the holes the, with a number 21 drill for the tapped holes and then we'll use a quarter inch and pilot this one through. go through far enough to drill through and no further. So I'm going to zero my quill read out here. Now let's grab our half inch bit and go ahead and put it all the way through. see how we do nope still tight just like the other side so we're gonna have to bore it okay let me grab the boring bar and get that set up Nice. I can't get it out, so 
must be doing good. Okay. Now I just need to flip it over. So that we can drill the holes through the other side here. Okay, uh, so the, the problem I was facing is to get this thing back in the vise rotated exactly 180 degrees. How do you get it in there exactly 180 degrees? Well, um, this is what I came up with. So I've got the pin in the hole, put a one, two, three block on the back jaw of the vise, and another one, two, three block on top of it, and hold it exactly square while tightening it down in the vise. And that gets me 180 degrees away from the way it was in before, at least close enough, close enough to put the holes in. Okay, so let's put in some holes. Last thing I have to do is rotate this 90 degrees and put in uh, a tap a hole in the center for the um, to lock in the the, uh, the the handle. Okay, let's take this over to the bench and tap the holes. Okay, I've got it in the bench here, and I kind of eyeballed it horizontal so I can tap this hole here on the top. And I'm just going to do these by hand. Try not to screw them up. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm going to... sure the chamfer is big enough on the top of that. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier and use the pin to try to get this as vertical as I can. And tap two more. These spiral flute taps are really nice. I use uh, spiral point taps and spiral flute whenever I can. The spiral point pushes the chips through, uh, through the hole and out the bottom, which would be fine in this scenario, um, but I had a spiral flute handy and it pulls them up out the top, as you can see. And these are great for machine tapping. Of course, I'm just doing this by hand. It's like my camera battery is about to go, so Maybe you'll get to see the rest of this. Maybe you'll see me at the grinder. In order to hold the dies in, the dies actually, let me grab one, have uh, these have points on them. The dies have these little holes in the side that the set screw needs to set into. And that's gonna work a lot better if the screw has a little bit of a point on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a point on these screws here at the grinder. I'm gonna do that. by just chucking them up one at a time in a cordless drill and running them against the wheel. And I'm gonna stand aside while the wheels spin up. Okay, and then just quickly put a point on each one of these. That's plenty.
Okay, let's go over the lathe and put a piece of stock in there and see if we can thread it. Okay, I got this all assembled and here on the, uh, on the lathe, now you can see there's a set screw in here that holds the handle through it. I've got the support pin in the chuck in the tail stock and I've got a quarter 20 die in the holder. Now, when I went to my tool supplier yesterday to buy some dies, they had several different kinds available um, and they had some that were a lot less expensive and they said, oh, just so you know, these are imports. That's okay, well that's fine. I'm just doing light duty work. I grabbed a couple of them. They're, they're still high speed steel at least. But they didn't have any imports in quarter 20. So she pulled out this one and said, I'm sorry, this one's gonna be a lot more expensive because it's not an import. It turns out it's made in Japan. So just for the record, in case you haven't figured it out from all the imperial measurements, I'm in the United States and apparently import means China and Japan is not an import. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but apparently that's how that works. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try. I got the quarter 20 in here. I've got a quarter piece of quarter inch material, actually a couple thou under to make it easy to thread with a little lead in chamfer on the end. Now, believe it or not, when I looked around my shop to try to find something I could thread that was a quarter of an inch, I don't have anything in my shop that's a quarter of an inch. So I grabbed some 3 8 inch hex aluminum, turned it down. Let me uh, lubricate this and lubricate the die. This is A9, which is my favorite lubricant for uh, aluminum. And let's just try it. Just feed it in. Give it a little turn. Actually, it's easier to do by turning the chuck. Oh, and that's biting in beautifully. Back up to break the chip. Oh, I like that. That's going very, very easily. And most importantly, it's way easier than changing out the change gears in this lathe. Let's go ahead and go all the way to the bottom here. There it is. Put it in reverse and back it out. Those are beautiful. Nice and smooth, good clean cut. Guess that's what you get with one of these non-import Japanese dies. Well, I am very happy with that. And you will definitely be seeing this tool again in a future video. Well, that's it for today. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. If you've got ideas for future videos, uh, questions you've had, things you'd like to see, let me know and I'll see if I can tackle those. Thank you for watching.